Hi, in this video we're going to look at using trigonometry for finding an unknown angle in a right angled triangle. So I'll show you how to name right angled triangles quite quickly. There is another video that I've made already that explains on how to do this when we're working out trigonometry for missing sides. But nevertheless I'll do a quick recap. Um, we're going to look at using uh, trigonometry to work out an unknown angle in a right angle triangle. You'll have the opportunity to have a practice of a couple by yourself. And there's some revision notes at the end. Okay, as a very quick recap then, let's just think about labelling the sides in a right angle triangle. Here's your right angle. Let's say we've got a missing angle down here. And missing angle, we often use the Greek letter theta. So this is theta. Sometimes we use x, but it's more common to use this letter. Okay, so opposite the angle is over here, because it's on the opposite side. Next to the angle, or adjacent to the angle, is down here. And the final side is called the hypotenuse. It's the one that's the longest side, hypotenuse, and that's always opposite the right angle. So we've got opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. We saw in previous videos that we can use sine, cos, and tan for when we've got certain parts of our information. So if we have the opposite and hypotenuse given to us, we can use sine. So if this is my missing angle again, we'll call it theta. Here's my right angle. If I've got this side and this side given, I'm going to be using sine. If I've got down here, which is adjacent, and up here, which is the hypotenuse, I'm going to be using cos. And if I've got over here and down here, I'm going to be using tan. So sine was for opposite and hypotenuse, cos for adjacent and hypotenuse, and tan for opposite and adjacent. Let's get straight in and have a go at some of these questions. So, I'm going to say that the unknown angle that we're looking for for this particular question is here. Here's theta, here's my right angle, and I'm going to give you two lengths. This one is 8 centimetres, and over here 16 centimetres. Now, in order to work out the missing angle, we first need to think about whether we've got the opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. So let's just very quickly label those up first. The 8 centimetre one is opposite the angle. So we'll call it O. The 16 centimetres one is opposite the right angle. It's obviously the longest sign we can see it is. We'll call that H. And we remember from our soccer toa that the one involving the O and the H is sine. So sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Sine of the angle equals 8 centimetres over 6 centimetres. Now, in the past, we were always given the angle, and we could type it in on our calculator. This time, we've got to work the angle out. You'll see on your calculator, as well as the sine button, above that, normally, is a button called sine to the minus 1. It's the inverse sine button. This is what we're going to be using today. So, we will press that and we'll say that theta, the missing angle, is equal to sine to the minus 1 of 8 over 16. So on your calculator, you'll be doing sine to the minus 1 of 8 over 8 divided by 16. You can use your um, fractions key if you want, or just simply use the divide button. But you'll type in that and you should get, coming out, 30. That means 30 degrees. Double check if you don't get that, that you've closed a bracket here, that you've used sine to the minus 1 and not just sine, and also that your calculator is in degrees mode, so you might see deg or a D in a box at the top of your display. So 30 degrees is the answer you should be getting when you do this sort of question. Let's have another example here. This time I'm going to write my missing angle up here. So here's theta. I'm going to say, here's my right angle. I've got a side of 12 units, 
and a side over here of 17 units. Let's think what we've got. This time I've got the hypotenuse and I've got the, angle, the side next to the angle. So A for adjacent. So cos has the ka part, so ka toa. So ka has got A and H. So we're going to use cos of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse from my A and my H. So 12 over 17. So we need to do that theta equals the inverse of cos. We're going to do cos to the minus 1 of 12 over 17. Remember, look on your calculator for your cos button. Cos to the minus 1 will be above that, so you'll probably need to press your shift or second function, depending on your calculator. But theta will then come out of your calculator, and you'll get an answer of 45.1 degrees. Just check that that is right. And again, if you're not getting that, just check that you've closed your brackets, that you've done a divide and not a multiply, that you've done cos to the minus 1, and that you're in degrees. I've also rounded my answer. You'll get more decimal places. I've just rounded it for ease. Okay, let's do a final example and then you can have a go at one by yourself. If you're ready to have a go, pause the video as soon as you're ready and have a think about it. So here's my missing angle, theta. I've got a side of 8 and another side of 23 units. Okay, this time I'm going to be using, well, I've got the opposite and I've got the adjacent. So I'm going to be using ta, tan, from my toa this time. So tan of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent, so 23 over 8. That means that theta equals tan to the minus 1 of 23 over 8. And that's going to give me an answer of 70.8 degrees when I've typed that in on my calculator. Okay. By now you should be ready to have a go at these two. Pause the video and I'll go through it in a second when you're ready. Okay, this first example over here then is my right angle. Let's see what we've got. We've got the opposite over here, and we've got the adjacent over here. So tan theta equals 6 over 8. So tan to the minus 1 of 6 over 8 will tell me what theta is. Do that on my calculator. So shift tan to get tan to the minus 1. 6 divided by 8, close my bracket, equals 36.87, nearest two decimal places, so 36.87 degrees. Let's see on this one over on the right hand side then, this time I've got the opposite, and I've got the hypotenuse, sine is, gives me that. So sine theta equals opposite high, over hypotenuse, 3 over 15. So theta equals sine to the minus 1 of 3 over 15. So again on my calculator, shift, sine, that gives me sine to the minus 1 on my display. 3 divided by 15, close my bracket, equals 11.54 units, uh, sorry, degrees, 11.54 degrees. Okay, let's have a quick look at some revisions. Okay, so if you're making revision notes and you want to have a look at some cards, let's just take a little look. Here is a calculator. This is the one that I've been using. It's a Canon. Um, most of them are the same. I just wanted to point out to you some information on here, just so that you're clear. Your sine, cos, and tan buttons above them have got sine to the minus 1, cos to the minus 1, and tan to the minus 1. To get those, I have to press my shift button. Yours might be slightly different to this, but nevertheless, you'll get something similar. This is important. You must end up using the sine to the minus 1, cos to the minus 1, or tan to the minus 1 for an angle. Okay, so that's important. Let's just remove this. Okay. 
Then, we've still been using socket tower just like before. So again, we're thinking of whether we're, we're, whether we're using sine, cos, or tan. So sine of an angle, so sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cos of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of an angle equals opposite over adjacent. Ensure that your calculator is in degrees mode. So at the top you should be looking for a D or DEG. Make sure you're using to the minus 1, so your inverse function. And also just double check that you close any brackets after your calculation just to make sure that your calculator is doing the thing that you want. Okay, hopefully this has been useful to you. Good luck in any exams or tests that you've got coming up and look out for more videos.